In this video, we're going to talk about OpenAI function calling. So the first thing to note is that the name is quite confusing. OpenAI isn't doing any function calling itself. Instead, it's suggesting which function you should call from your code and with which parameters. And this functionality exists to make it easier to pull in external data into our LLM applications and basically into the prompt to do something with it. So let's have a look at how it works. So we've basically got four components. We've got our functions, we've got the application, we've got the API, this is the OpenAI API, and then we've got the LLM sort of behind that. So let's have a look what happens. So from our application, we create a bunch of function definitions and a prompt. We pass that in, we call that to the API. The API then takes that and converts it into another prompt, uh, which has a system prompt containing functions and then the prompt itself. And the LLMs behind that, so i.e. the GPT 3.5 and 4, have been fine-tuned to know what to do when they receive that system prompt. And so they will then send back, here's the function name and the parameters and the values that go with that, and then that will get sent back from the API to our application. We then need to take those parameters and values call the function itself in our code get, and get back the results. We then take those results and put them into the, basically into the OpenAI message history, send that back to the API, that'll then send it to the LLM, and then that will then come back with effectively the answer to our prompt. So let's see how we do this in code. So I've taken the weather example from the OpenAI docs, and then I've just substituted the hard coding for a real weather API so we can see how it works in real life. So let's open up this file, function calling openai.py, and you can see we've got some imports at the top and then we're initializing the OpenAI client. We've then got a function called get current weather. Now that takes in a latitude and a longitude. It then is gonna make a call to the open weather map API, you can see I've got my weather map API key getting pulled out of the environment there. And then we're constructing a request URL that contains the latitude, the longitude, and my key. We then make a call to that using requests, and then we construct a result, and we're just putting in the latitude, the longitude, and then we're putting in all the values from the main part of that response. And then we'll convert that into JSON and send it back. If we then come down a little bit more, you can see we've got another function called run conversation, and that's where the prompt is gonna come in. We're gonna create a me uh, put that into a messages array. Then if we come down a little bit more, we're gonna define our tools. Now the tools need to have, first of all, a type, so the type is function, and then we define the function, so we give it a name, so we're gonna call it get current weather, and then we pass in the parameters. So remember, those are gonna be latitude and longitude, and then we give the information about them as well, and that's in JSON schema format. We then make our call to open AI. So we're going to use GPT 3.5. You can see we pass in the messages, so that's going to have the prompt, and then we pass in those tools, so that's going to have the definition of our current weather function. We then get back the response, and we pull out the tool calls. We're then going to check whether we've got any tool calls. We'll put the response that we just got into the messages array. We're then going to define a dictionary um, called available functions. That's going to go from that string, get current weather, to the actual function itself. And then we're gonna iterate over the tool calls. We'll print out the function name that it thinks we tried to, we wanna call, the parameters that go with that. And then we're gonna kinda go through, get a, pull, again, pull out the function, find the underlying function to call, get the arguments, and then we're gonna make the call to the function, i.e. it's gonna go and call that, get the weather from the, the underlying API. And then we'll print the response that we get. We'll then put the response into that messages array along with the, the tool call ID. And then we're gonna make our second call to the API. So this time it's gonna, it's gonna be quite similar to the first one, but in, we don't have any tools this time. So we just have the messages and we're gonna pass that in. And then if we come down to the bottom, we're then gonna say, our question is, what's the weather like in Paris? We're gonna call the run conversation with that question and then we'll iterate over the chunks we get back and print them to the screen. And you can see it comes back. So we get, the first thing is the function, so it's get current weather. You can see the parameters, it's got a latitude of Paris, the longitude of Paris. Then the API calls, it's got a bunch of information about the weather in Paris right now. And then finally, we get the LLM response. So the current weather in Paris is 10.39 degrees Celsius with a slight breeze. Now, one other cool thing we can do is we can find the weather in multiple locations. So we can do multiple function calls in, in effectively one prompt. So we're going to update it to say what's the weather like in Paris and San Francisco. And then if we come back out and call our same script again, you can see we get, again, it first of all does Paris. And then, the, then, it, then now we get the function, again, current weather parameters. And this time it's for San Francisco. And then we get the API showing us what the weather's like in San Francisco. And this time the LLM prints out currently in Paris, the weather is da-da-da. And then underneath we get in San Francisco, the temperature is 
Well, more or less the same, actually. It's kind of interesting. Uh, so Paris and San Francisco, same sort of weather today. So that's OpenAI. And I think Mistral have something similar with their closed source models. Now, something to keep in mind is that you don't have to do any function calling if you don't want to. You could instead use this functionality just to extract structured data. So to learn how to do that, check out this video up here.